What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Friday, September 4th, 2020. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the new face of video games, Blessing, Eddie Oye Jr. Happy Friday, Greg. Happy Friday to you. Are you excited? A long weekend. Yeah, man. A long weekend. A, a good one for video games. I'll a say. great one for video games. I, I woke up this morning and I had about three codes come into my inbox with a Ooh. fourth one still to be expected. And oh, I'm wow. I'm very excited. I'm also moving this weekend, which is which is pretty big. And so that's gonna take up my my Saturday. I was gonna uh, say that's bad though for playing all these games, right? Yeah, no, I, I keep forgetting <laughs> yeah, that I'm moving yeah. tomorrow. I've not, I've like not even started to to pack yet. Like I've been I've been slowly moving stuff over over the last two to three weeks. Uh, because I've I've had the place for a while now, but I'm finally making the, the final push tomorrow, and so I gotta I gotta okay. do all that stuff. Okay. Kevin's supposed to be helping me too, and I keep reminding then, him. And part of me is like, I feel like he's gonna forget. He won't. Forget. I feel like he's he's gonna totally forget. But nah, he, he's he, the one to pick up truck. He's someone who like acts like he's totally gonna gonna forget it, but he will always be there for you, especially if you if he feels the need for a pickup truck, like he is going to like he's mm. gonna be there. Yeah. Worst case thing. scenario, worst case scenario, Kevin will oversleep, but he'll be he'll still wake up. He'll just wake up 15 minutes too late and you'll get that okay. text of like, I might be a little bit late, but I'm on my way. Don't worry. I See, like, that, that, that's the thing that worries me, too, is that I've not set a time for Kevin yet. Like, I'm not told him like what time mm -hmm. I'm moving because I have I have the whole day if I'm being frank. Like, I can make sure. this happen whenever. If I need to move at 6 p.m. at night, I'll move it. You don't have that much stuff in that room right now. So, I mean, that's yeah. the thing, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's yeah. The, I mean, the big thing I need Kevin for is the desk. Like, the desk is the biggest thing I own right now. Sure. Uh, and also, I, I want him to help me out because I realized literally earlier this week, I was like, I don't have a chair at my new place, do I? And I, and the chair I'm rocking right now is literally a chair that I got out of the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, and so, I'm Kevin's going to help me out uh, do a heist. We're going to steal, steal a chair from office. Uh, well, you're, I mean, you're, that's not stealing you're allowed to take that that's okay your requisition okay right? i mean i never i didn't ask anybody because i figured it's better to ask forgiveness than ask permission but i, exactly. I guess well, I know we, we definitely had a lot of plans for the nine office chairs that are just gathering dust exactly in the kind i of didn't want to, like, Nick to walk in one day and be like there's what a the chair fuck? missing yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the fuck took that the is something that is really quick is someone in the chat brought up a really good question blessing are you keeping the bed which has been so important in your work from home yeah. setup no, I'm not keeping the bed. Uh, it's unfortunate. Yeah, when I when I moved here, the bed was actually included with the room, which nice. is why like I I didn't go on Amazon see this beauty and go, that's the one right there. <laughs> that's the one I'm gonna go for. I no, can like, really go for a bed I'd find in my grandmother's spare room. Exactly. No, this yeah. is the this is a bed though that was already here when I got here, and so sadly I'm not gonna be able to take the bed with me. Um, in, <laughs> yeah, that's okay. You're okay. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm sad about it. I think. Moving sucks, so you you have my sympathies. Thank you. It's also supposed to be a super hot weekend in the Bay, so Is you have really? my sympathies. Yeah, 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 Jen sent me an article today, I think. On, yeah, she did it on Instagram. If you want me, I can look at it. Hold on. Yes, please. I need oh, that update. It's not hot right now. Because right now, it's a pretty chill day. Well, I can't imagine tomorrow. The time, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she, SF Chronicle has a headline today. Bay Area, Bay Area temperatures could hit 113 degrees this weekend as scorching oh, uh, heat wave approaches. Fahrenheit? Oh, yeah, no, so that's, the, <laughs> that's the Bay Area. Yeah, that's so not San Francisco. Yeah. It's looking like Sunday. It's going to be like 80. Um, yeah. 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 Like, when they talk about Bay Area, that's like probably the whole like way, area. way out say the area. in like East, uh, East Bay and like North Bay and stuff like that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't yeah. like that at all. I know. I know. I have something else you may not like. You're going to, you won't, oh, no. I don't, it's not that you won't like it. Oh, I guess because no. you're, you're a good, you're a good boy. All right. You're, you're a very good child. No, that's out. Is that one of the codes you got? That's one of the codes I'm waiting for. Okay. Because they okay. Uh, Tim got me a code yesterday. Turned yeah. out code didn't work. Very upsetting. That. that happens all the time. <laughs> I was ready no. to play it. What I wanted to do is give a quick shout out to our friends at G4. And what, what my original intro was going to be, I introduced you as the uh, the new face of video games, of course. Mm -hmm. And I said I was going to be like, well, how do you feel about that? Soon to be ripped away from you, of course. Blessing that title because of course you've been doing this now for nine months. So you're you're, you're starting. People know who you are now. You know what I mean? You've had a you've had a stellar 2020 despite the odds. However, if you go to G4's Twitter Twitter right now, G4 TV, uh, you can watch a great video from Adam Sessler. Uh, G4 is starting a competition basically uh, of G4 needs talent looking for people who are in the United States over 18. Uh, you can go to r slash G4 TV on their subreddit to get all I the information there. I know, but you have a job. So it's like, I don't think you need to worry so much about going to be a G4 host and instead worry about, you know, not pissing off Nick Scarpino getting fired. Fair. Don't leave me. Fair 
Yeah, but no, here's the thing. But neither, neither are you weaving. Trust me. Growing, growing, but, growing but, up, I was very, I was a very big fan of Attack of the Show and G mm-hmm. and um, I was gonna say G four and uh, X <laughs> and, and X Play. Yeah. And Cinema Tech and uh, Ninja Warrior and American Ninja Warrior and Cheaters. I don't really like cops that much. Um, what did you think then, about like, Live PD though? Oh, Live PD was great. What do you think about Campus PD? <laughs> like, yeah. like, those those yeah. are some good Campus G4 PD shows, great. too. Uh, did I say Cold Monkeys? Because Cold Monkeys is also great. I don't know if you did say Cold Monkeys. I'm not sure. Cold Monkeys. Uh, did, uh, do you remember Cold Monkeys? Did you watch Cold Monkeys? Mm, oh, man. That no, show. I don't, know that is. I don't know how it would hold up in 2020. But back in the day, that, sh- that show was great. It was basically like a like an adult cartoon, like a family guy or like a South Park. But the whole huh? premise of it was that uh, it was about basically a game studio, like one of the, uh, like a really bad, toxic game studio oh great okay um, yeah great that would totally <laughs> hold up that's exactly what the yeah video and like the, char- right the characters were like pixel art sprite stuff like yeah it was really good really offensive but like funny at the time uh so just to wrap this one up because we're just being ourselves and goofing around uh like i said uh, you can go to g4 tv on twitter to, to watch the awesome adam sessler video hear all the rules and see what it is basically though they're asking for you to either nominate or uh, get submissions from if you want to do it the idea here is that they're looking for the next wave of hosts they're talking about young people 18 year olds and ups and i think that you know 2020 has been great about uh, ref- uh bringing all these new voices and faces uh, out of uh the communities we're all in, right? And so I think it's a great movement. I think if you've seen somebody, whether it be on our podcast or somebody else's podcast or anywhere you see people guest on podcasts or just smaller YouTubers or podcasters you're listening to, this is a great way to get their names out there. So I encourage you to go, uh, like I said, to twitter.com slash G4TV or to the subreddit over on uh, r slash G4TV and nominate either yourself, which is totally fine, or uh, the people you've seen guests on other shows, uh, voices you think deserve a shot at G4. Maybe not Blessing, who has a full-time job i will remind you once again but like what if what like once again i'm a, I'm a fan of x play listen blessing. all i'm saying is adam sessler adam sessler was like my first greg miller you know blessing. where i saw that guy and i was like i like what he's saying about video games i want to be i want to be him someday blessing. you know blessing. you know blessing, blessing. hold on one you know? second as your if boss you, leave, you gotta take boss, you, know? you know if i'm there i'll take you with me no you i was gonna give you the floor web Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk Olivia about Mark. this and let's talk about the fact that Prince of Persia oh, yeah, might be coming back. And Immortal yeah, Phoenix man. Rise. Stop talking about G4. Uh, Phoenix <laughs> Rising might be getting a, or just gave away its release date. And you might be playing The Witcher 3 again because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show at patreon.com slash kind of funny games. You can go there and ask your questions, of course, to be part of the show. You can give us your squad up request to be part of the show. But more importantly, you can get the show ad free. You can get it with the exclusive post show we do each and every weekday. And you can get a bevy of other benefits, like, of course, submitting to the games cast, uh, being a part of the other shows, uh, getting to see the old. Well, I guess the new, not the old thing. I was going to call it the old, but it's the newer thing, right? Of a bless up, blessings, a, a Patreon exclusive yeah, show man. where he talks to you and answers your questions. Episode nine this month. <laughs> All right, great. Is it up yeah. already? Oh, I no. guess it's September now. Shit, fuck. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel like it's the longest. Uh, however, of course, if you have no bucks to toss our way, it's no big deal. You can go to twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames and watch us record the show live. Uh, if, if you are watching it live, you have a special job. Go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up. So we can set the stre- record straight. God, I don't know. I'm, I'm, it's Friday. I'm off. It's Friday, road. man. I just want to play Avengers. Here. I just want to play Avengers. You know what I mean? Dude, uh, when are we, we going to play together, by the way? Whenever you're down. Like, it's that Dude, thing I'm, where it's, I'm down we're, whenever. We're in that thing right now with Avengers where it's complicated and uh, to play. Not complicated, but like when you're doing the single player campaign, there's, uh, you know, you'll be playing missions where you can play with other people and then there'll be a mission that's solo. So like last night, I dropped into Fran's stream. I saw he was about to finish the mission. I was like, let's play together. He's like, yeah, totally. Let me do this one thing. And he started doing it. I was like, oh, man, this is a solo mission. I'll see you later. So it's like, Uh I've been just waiting for other people to get to where they need to be or whatever, or where they want help or whatever. And then I'm ready to go. I'm ready to fucking go. My, my, My team's pumped and primed. Um, you're watching live, such a job, kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, roosterteeth.com, and listening on podcast services around the globe. Um, housekeeping for you, I have a bunch of kind of funny games content updates for you. 
we talked about this on a stream earlier this week, but I don't know if it ever got circulated around too much. But the big deal right now is that the Kind of Funny Games cast is recording this afternoon. Of course, you can watch live on patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. It's going to be our Avengers review in progress, spoiler free, everybody coming in no matter where they are in the, the game, talking about what their impressions are of it. It's going to go live pretty much as soon as possible after that. So, you know, it'll be recorded live on Patreon. There'll be the post show, all that stuff. And then afterwards, right to youtube.com slash games and podcast services around the globe. We wanted to give everybody this week as much time to play Avengers so we could all come in and actually have something to say. Uh, on top of that, it's Xbox weekend once again. Tomorrow, of course, Saturday, 6 a.m. Pacific time, you can get the newest episode of the Kind of Funny Xcast with Snowbike Mike, Alana Pierce, and Gary Witta. Then Sunday, uh, my Halo playthrough continues uh, on the YouTube archive version. You can get episode three, I believe, youtube.com slash kind of funny games Sunday. Then, interestingly, Monday, is a holiday here in the, these United States called Labor Day. If you didn't know, for the first four years of Kind of Funny, we did not understand that, and we, we didn't really treat it like a business, and so we just all fucked around. We're taking Monday off. There is no content on Monday outside of the stuff that would already be going live, which I say, and I look around, and I'm like, I don't think anything is going live, but you understand what I mean. Monday's off. Now, that does domino a few things. Usually, we record PS I Love You XOXO on Mondays. We are going to do it on Tuesdays. And then it turns out that Blessing's taking that day off for a four day weekend because he's moving and needs to recover, which is very understandable. So instead, PS I Love You is recording Wednesday, uh, similar to the Games Cast, I believe. We're doing it in the morning. We'll try to get it up as soon as possible just to keep it all out there. And hey, I say this literally in case it comes true. I don't know. But hey, maybe we'll have a release date by then. Again, that is just, I'm just saying that. For the uh, PS5? Yeah, maybe they'll do a release date, man. Can you imagine if it worked in our favor for a change? That we don't That'd do the awful. show? Because that was a concern, as I did not want to do the show this afternoon, have it cook all the way till Tuesday, and then fucking Monday or something else, or even, I don't even know, the weekend, something leaks or whatever. Now, of course, what'll happen is we'll record it Wednesday morning. Wednesday fucking at 2 o'clock, they're going to announce the goddamn release date. But you're welcome, and you get it. Um, thank you to our Patreon producers, Mohammed Mohammed, Blackjack, and Tom Bach. Today we're brought to you by Brooklyn and Logitech and Hymns, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> Tom, for some news, we got five items on the Roper Report. A baker's dozen. And Greg, before you actually get into number one. I want to go back to the G G4 thing for a minute because sure. people are tagging me a lot on Twitter. And I want to say, stop tagging me. Instead, I want to direct you to Paris Lilly. Yeah, Paris, I've been retweeting report. Paris. Paris is out there, yeah. Tag Paris, Paris is one because, of those voices, right? Yeah, like Paris Paris is making it vocal that he he wants the shot, right? He, he doesn't want to throw away his shot, as they would say in Hamilton. Uh, and you should tag Paris. Like, promote Paris. Paris is awesome. Paris is talented. Uh, give your support to Paris. I think everybody you've everybody who's come on a kind of funny show in the past year or whatever, and you've gone, man, they should hire that person. This is your opportunity to put them out there. I would, of yeah. course, love to hire all the talented people we've brought through, but you know that you don't donate enough on Patreon because you're a horrible person not getting around. Hey, but you know, the, no. no, they understand it was a joke, Barrett. Uh, it's the thing where that's not possible, right? This is G4 trying to build a team from scratch and trying to give, it looks like, a shot to a bunch of people who do not have the reach and you know full-time gigs think about that you think of somebody like uh paris you think of khalif right you think of these people who are fucking hustling and trying to build these things but are also working full-time jobs that have nothing to do with the games industry like th those yeah. are the kind of people i think for this opportunity should be uh getting the bump right i know i made a bunch of tweets or i made a tweet when g4 got announced of like i want a show that's of course still true like i'd love to do a kind of funny show on g4 or whatever with all of us or something like that or host whatever but that's not what they're talking about right now right now they're talking about hey, who can do full-time hosting for G4? Yeah. I think that's where we got to really try to lift up a bunch of people. Yeah, and that's what I'll say, too. Like, I, I, I do not necessarily want to host for G4 full-time. But, you know, if you wanted to make me a commentator on Ninja Warrior for part-time... Sure, yeah, that's hey, part of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adam Sessler, do, do what you do. I know Adam Sessler has nothing to do with Ninja Warrior, but if you have the connections, <laughs> all right. All right, well, right, we'll try to get you back for Ninja Warrior. I, I, how about this, though? It's a one-off special where you get to commentate alongside Golden Boy, but then I get to compete in other totally out of shape video games. Oh my God. Get to compete. 100% I'm down. Okay, cool. Just yeah. sure. American Gamer Warrior. There you go. Number one on the Roper Report, it looks like the Prince of Persia remake is going to be at Ubisoft Forward. This is VGC. Blessing, can you go there? Actually, I already click on the link I put in there earlier. I can't believe I didn't put down the author. I'm usually way better about yeah, that. Yeah, I'll find it. Thank you. Well, I, I'll start reading from the VGC article though. 
Ubisoft is reporting, reportedly planning to announce a Prince of Persia remake during its upcoming Ubisoft Forward event. The French publisher recently revealed plans to hold its second Ubisoft Forward game showcase on September 10th. Promising, quote, new games and big news, Ubisoft said the digital event will feature Immortals Phoenix Rising, the game formerly known as Gods and Monsters. R- full stop right there. I wasn't on the episode when this new name uh, broke, Blessing, and you guys were like, this yeah. is a terrible name. What a terrible name. It's a terrible name, right? Like, I don't understand why they went this route. Isn't like, Immortals, you know, like, the weird. name of, like, a really bad, like, Greek god movie that, like, with, like, yes. Liam Neeson? Um, yeah, Tim Getty has correctly pointed out that Immortals is the name of a billion different things. Because there's, like, a, a Marvel movie called, called Immortals, right, that's coming out? Or am I thinking of something else? Eternals. 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 That's what yeah, I was yeah. thinking of. Yeah. All right. For me, it's so, more that when I hadn't seen it in print until this morning, because I'd heard I've been listening to the podcast while I've been doing other stuff. And so I, when you guys were like Immortals, Phoenix Rising, I was like, oh, okay. And then to see they spell Phoenix F E Y N X. Yeah. I was like, oh, so wait, is the main character named Phoenix? Yeah, I think it's something along those lines. And if so, then why isn't it Immortals colon Phoenix Rising? Why is it Immortals Phoenix Rising? Is his full name, is his last name Phoenix and his first name is Immortals? Hi, why I'm Phoenix. Am- Immortals Phoenix. Immortals Phoenix colon Rising. What if that's their full, the, that's first, middle, and last what if name? Phoenix, what if Phoenix is the main character's middle name and Immortals is like their their first oh name and Rising is their last name? God, and then and they, they call him M for, no. for short. <laughs> my name they is Rising. Oh. <laughs> Immortals Phoenix Rising. I'm sorry, M, I'm going to need your full name. I'm also, Tom Ivan. Tom Ivan wrote this. Thank you, Tom Ivan. I, I apologize. I, I really, I really hope it's like a revealed, uh, kind of like the Dark Knight Rises. Like you should use your full name, Robin. And like the very I like end your real. I like your re- I like your name. I don't use it. <laughs> Anyways, back to the article that has nothing to do really about Phoenix Rising, although the next one will. Uh, and speaking on the latest Triple Click podcast, Bloomberg reporter Jason Schreier claimed Ubisoft is planning to use the event to, quote, announce a bunch of games like the Prince of Persia remake uh, that was leaked a couple weeks ago, end quote. Uh, retailer max.com.gt, of course, where I go for all my purchases, whether it be video games or snow tires, recently published and then pulled a listing for Prince of Persia remake uh, for uh, uh, PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch. The Prince of uh, Persia series hasn't seen a full installment since 2010's The Forgotten Sands. In 2018, Ubisoft released a mobile spinoff, Escape, but otherwise, the series has been superseded by Assassin's Creed, a franchise which itself started life as a Prince of Persia spinoff. Blessing, do you believe a Prince of Persia remake is almost upon us? This will be next I, week, the 10th. I can. I think, you know, I... I, I think my it's arm, and I guess I can. <laughs> yeah, like I, I mean, I, I can believe it. I think it makes sense for them to do uh, Prince of Persia. Like people love Prince of per- Persia. People uh, have asked for a Prince of Persia. Ubisoft Forever. is interesting. Is an interesting publisher because I feel like they have so many franchises that are beloved that might not necessarily get the return as something like the Tom Clancy games or the right Assassin's Creed. Cell. Yeah, like like Splinter Cell is another one of those where people have been clamoring for it and asking for it forever, and they've not done it probably because they probably ran the numbers and, and, and have gone like, hey, no, it would be more profitable to do Ghost Recon Wildlands, or it'd be more profitable to do uh, The Division 2, right, because of the nature of those games, uh, being either being games as a service or being multiplayer or just being more uh, relevant, like in the case of something like Assassin's Creed or Far Cry, right? Like I feel like there's, as far as what those franchises are, I like th- those. Those are, I guess, are just like more modern and more palpable for people as opposed sure. to something like Spinner Cell, which has come and gone. And I think, I can, I, I think now's the time, right? I think there's been enough time passed since we've gotten our last Prince of Persia, and since we've gotten like a good Splinter Cell game, that I think the return of those could hit home. And when when we look at the Ubisoft Four that's that's coming up, right? Like in their announcement for that, they talked about how the main show will feature updates on Watch Dogs Legion, which. Is about to be out, and we got an update on at the last Ubisoft Forward. They also yeah. mentioned Hyperscape, which is already out. They mentioned Rainbow Six Siege, which is already out, uh, and then they mentioned Immortals: Phoenix Rising, you know, which is which is upcoming. And no mention that, of Assassins when they were promoting it. No mention of Assassins. No. Huh. I imagine and like, they they might have like another one planned right right before Assassins. Yeah, I mean, they could be like they they might have three Ubisoft Forwards. Who knows? Um, but you like think that. So? I mean, who knows, right? Have they said that like they'll? No. they're only sticking to two. No, they haven't said that at all. I just feel I felt like even I, it, it's just an interesting pivot where I thought the first Ubisoft forward, okay, this takes place at E3, and then when they were like, oh, we're doing another one, I was like, oh, okay, but I thought that was more of a 
not stopgap, but even, but just, hey, these projects weren't ready for what the E3 presentation would have been. So, like, why not push them here? But it I mean, could, it, you're right that it could totally shift to, hey, we're Ubisoft and we're doing these monthly, at least leading up to this. But you figure to do it in October for another Ubisoft forward, you'd be right on the doorstep of Legion, unless Legion slips again. Well, I'm thinking we got the last Ubisoft forward in July. We're getting this sure. one in September, two months later. And then we, yeah. we fast forward. To, uh, when does when does Assassin's Creed come out? November? November. Yeah, November. Yeah. And so, like, let's say you do one right before Assassin's Creed, and, and that way you're able to cover Assassin's sure. Creed. Then uh, if this leak date for Immortals Phoenix Rising is correct, right? Immortals Phoenix Rising comes out in December. And then you also have Far Cry 6 in February. And so, like, you you then have, like, a good lineup there to then touch on. And by then, you're probably getting to the new season of Hyperscape. Like, there's enough content there that I think having having those three Ubisoft forwards to be able to touch on on, on their games lineup right now, which is very heavy. Like, they are very active uh, for this fall going into next spring. Yeah. I think could line up and make sense. But looking at the second Ubisoft forward... I was going to say, and, let, let me bring in the second story and continue this yeah. conversation. Uh, number two comes from IGN. Adam Bankhurst over there writes, Immortals Phoenix Rising release date might have leaked. According to the Microsoft store, Ubisoft's Immortals Phoenix Rising. How many times am I going to fucking say that this episode? Uh, previously known as Gods and Monsters will be released on December 3rd, 2020, at least on Xbox One. The Microsoft Store listing also reveals new screenshots, which you can see below. Go to IGN.com. And further details the upcoming grand mythological adventure. In Immortals Phoenix Rising, players will become Phoenix, a new winged demigod who is on a quest to save the Greek gods. Oh man, what if this is a crossover with God of War? <laughs> You're trying to stop that. Oh my God. Uh, Phoenix will be able to wield the powers of gods like Achilles' sword and... Dedi- Delios? How do I say that? Barry, you seem like a smart kid. You know Greek. You know Greek oh, gods. Oh, 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 you play all your Assassin's you Creed. Yeah, uh, third paragraph in this story. Day right Dallas. Day Dallas. Day Dallas. Uh, wings Daedalus. to. I don't know. That's my Daedalus. Daedalus. Uh, wings to fight uh, enemies and solve puzzles. A full stop. Just a Greg story here. I don't understand. As much as I love, you know, Odyssey. As much as I loved, uh, you know, well, I, I guess reboot God of War, which isn't the same thing. But in general, just in God of War, it was fun to go kill gods, right? I have no idea. Other than the fact that kids just hate homework, or just people hate homework, because even now, if something I have to do for homework, it's homework. Uh, in high school, I remember having the Greek gods book we were reading and just being such a slog and just being so disinterested in it. And I have no idea why, because it's just a fucked up su- superhero story. If you're listening right now and you're a high school kid, maybe a junior high kid, earlier than that, you're way too young to be listening to kind of funny content. But outside of that, homework is very easy. Just read the fucking chapter. Take the 30 minutes it takes to do it. Because let me tell you, the rest of your life is fucking chores and homework. And you, you're going to you, you're gonna look back and think how easy you had it. I digress. And, and, uh, if you, and if you did the Greek god homework back in high school, like think about how prepared you'd be for this moment. Reading I'd be killing Dallas. it. Dallas. You'd be destroying it, right? Oh, you, or all the or you'd be the one making these stories. The same. You know? True. It's true. Uh, nanobiologist, you wrongs me. Uh, you just nailed it, though. Blessing. Day Dallas is how you say it. He's a legendary craftsman who created the labyrinth that contained the Minotaur of King Minos. There you go. Uh, back to the story. Uh, iconic mythological beasts, including Cyclops and Medusa, uh, will try to stop you on your journey, and you will have to face them in combat, both in the air and on the ground. Phoenix will also have access to self-guided arrows, telekinesis, and more, all of which will help her on her journey in this stylized open world across seven unique regions, each inspired by the gods. So we have yet another Ubisoft game here that has already been, as you said, Blessing, uh, confirmed for the next Ubisoft forward next week. That yes. This one, though, it looks like the release date being September or December 3rd. Yes. And so we- when you... When when you look at both of those, right, and you look at just this next Ubisoft forward, uh, really like the big the big title, especially if this December date is, is correct, right, is going to be Mortals Phoenix Rising. Like they're probably going to do some sort of deep dive, some sort of reveal of that. And they also mentioned in that same post that there are going to be more yet to be re- to be revealed surprises. Yeah. I don't know if Immortals Phoenix Rising is going to be the thing to carry that Ubisoft forward on its own, especially for comparing sure. comparing this Ubisoft forward to the caliber of the previous one, where we did get Far Cry 6, and we did get Watch Dogs Legion, and we did get Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and we got Hyperscape, the, the yeah. release date and stuff there. I think if you're going to, to do a, a whole-ass uh, Ubisoft forward that is, all right, Immortals Phoenix Rising, I think the other thing that would bring that thing up to par would be Prince of Persia. Like if oh, you're totally. going to, if you can end that there. If you can end on the teaser trailer or open with the teaser trailer for 
uh, Prince and be like, yeah, pr- the Prince of Persia remakes happening. We're in you assume it's the you know classic PlayStation Two Prince of Persia remake or whatever. Not like a, they're doing the Nolan North one from two thousand seven, eight, nine somewhere in there, or the Jake yeah. Hall one. You know, the Jake oh, Hall one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's rem- and it's just a remastering of the movie. How tall is Jake Hall? Do you think taller than Fran, but shorter than Tim? Mm. Yeah, I can see that. Fair. Yeah, 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 yeah. This uh, is this is very much a reference to a song called "How Tall Is Jake Hall." That one uh, Chloe is that very um, obsessed with. She's the one that brought it to my attention. Mm. It's a song called "How Tall Is Jake Hall." That, that's very on brand for her. Uh, yeah. Really quick, uh, y'all are talking about like Beyonce. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, y'all talking about like Here's Prince the of Persia. Tra- hottest track off Lemonade. How tall is Jake Gyllenhaal? <laughs> <laughs> um, what's the? I, I kind of want us to to think about this now. Of what's, 511, so you nailed it. What's the over under of, of Splinter Cell next week? Zero. Not happening, no. Okay. Sorry. I, just wanted to, I, I don't I just think there's a that chance. There. Yeah. Okay. It's, you know, you, you touched on this in the beginning, Bless, of like they have a Splinter Cell, they have Prince of Persia, and they're not doing anything with them. And it's an interesting case study to look at that because I really do think when you look at Ubisoft, and if I was to tell you, Oh, it's a yeah, there's a new game announced and it's not Gods and Monsters because this doesn't fit at all. What I'm about to say, but hey, there's a new game announced. And you're like, oh, what's it like? I'm like, oh, it's a Ubisoft game. I think that puts you immediately into two tracks, right? Where it's either the giant open world, there's a million things to do and checkpoints to do and areas to clear, or it's the games as a service somehow multiplayer thing yeah. they're doing. And that, I don't think or that's both somehow. Or both somehow. And that's not by coincidence, right? Like when Vivendi was breathing down Ubisoft's neck and the Gimel family had to get super serious about how they're going to spend them off, it was batting down the hatches and let's double down on what works. And it was, these are the kind of games that works. And I think, you know, Ubisoft uh, has been a publisher that has looked ahead and seen what is popular right now and tried to make sure that that will be popular in nine months or why i guess that's way too short but two years you know three years when they put out a game for it and so i think you keep something like prince of persia and splinter cell in your back pocket until you're in a position where you're comfortable enough which i think they are now Mm -hmm. and you're in a spot where you need them and that's the one thing where i don't think you look at it and you go, do they need them? Prince of Persia as a remake is interesting, right? Because it's like, cool, it's a game you already love. It's a game you already fucking adored. We've gone through and we're doing the, you know, the Blue Point Shadow of the Colossus thing where it's, you know, from the ground up, but it's inspired by it. It's this thing kind of, you know, you go through and yeah. do that. That's an interesting ball of wax to put it into, but I don't know how that fits in their current portfolio. And if they've just moved away enough from that to be like, cool, we are going to do something that is single player narrative uh, linear that you get to go through and do. I mean, toward the beginning of this year, they talked about their editorial team, which is the team that is responsible for like the overarching vision and the overarching like creative vision of their games and the direction, all that stuff. And they they talked about how, based off of last year's performance of their games, being Ghost Recon, Breakpoint, and The Division Two, uh, or was it the was it the, the Division Two that did, that didn't sell as well as they thought it was going to be? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, them talking about the performance of those games and then talking about how they want to shift direction and put more, more TLC into stuff. I can see Prince of Persia being somewhat of a product of that, right? Yeah. And of course, like this would have been in development for longer than the last just nine last months. year, yeah. Um, but like I can, I can, I can see at a certain point Ubisoft going, "Oh man, we do have two games that we put out now." We do have the open world games, which are your Far Cries, the Assassin's Creed's, and, and your whatevers. And then also we do have our games and service games, which are your Divisions and your Rainbow Sixes yeah. uh, and those ones. And your Ghost Recon Breakpoints and like other things that, you know, are the marriage between the two. Yeah, yeah. Maybe if we... Let's let's mess around with some of our other IP. Let's mess around and put, put out a remake of Prince Persia. See how people like it and see how it does. And if it does well enough, then we can green light a, br- a brand new from the ground up linear Prince of Persia game to give our catalog a, l- a little bit more freshness like i could see that being being uh a case for them sure and i mean it's the thing we've seen time and time again with uh them putting uh sam fisher into all manner of thing right like he's in everything he's in rainbow six like like he's in uh, that weird mobile game they put out like like that'll be at ubisoft forward there will be a sam fisher reference at ubisoft forward but there won't be a game for him as ubisoft forward and that's the thing of like how long you wait for that. I don't know. And what they're, you know, how many times they've gone through and tried to get it off the ground and haven't found something that actually works for them or not. But it'll be interesting. Uh, both these rumors, I believe, right? Like I believe that, yeah, Prince of Persia remake, while 
right, it doesn't fit the portfolio. I do think, as you've said, they're trying to move away from that. And they've been, you know, vocal about that to an extent that I think they're to a point where they can loosen it up a bit and, and look back to double down on things. And then, yeah, for Phoenix Rising in terms of a release date, yeah, why not? Yeah, I mean, that game that's the game that was supposed to come out in February. And so when it got delayed, I I was thinking fall. But I think the, the big thing that threw a wrench into, into it was... Uh, I believe when it was leaked on Google Stadia, because they had like a build of the game. Yeah, that, yeah that, right. You know, Remember that? that? Yeah, yeah. They'd when be that like, happened, that was an old build. That was an old thing. The names changed. They said that. Yeah, like, what? yeah. And when that happened, that's when it came out of like, oh yeah, they're we're we, we're redoing elements of this game. We're we're trying to think from the ground up and all that stuff, which made me go, oh man, is this game way more further out? Um, but you know, with that, with both those things being the case, December December seems right. Like especially if we're going to come out at Ubisoft Forward with it, yeah. Uh, and, and you're you you assume they're on the precipice of, you know, announcing either like or showing off the gameplay breakdown or showing off like whatever the thing may be, right? Like a December date along with that sounds right. Though I think that that then becomes becomes interesting for me because I that that then makes this fall going to next spring just so busy for Ubisoft. Because mm-hmm. that is Watch Dogs Legion. That is, we also got Hyperscape. I should add, add in with this, right? So Hyperscape, Watch Dogs Legion, Assassin's Creed, uh, Gods and Monsters, and then Far Cry Six, and then also like Seasons of Rainbow Six. That's wild. Don't, don't forget Quarantine too. That's right around the corner. I'm sure. You, oh, you think so? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think that. I think it's gonna be a little bit before you hear about that game. So yeah, I don't know. Ubisoft Forward's gonna be interesting, and I will be interested to see if it becomes a bi-monthly thing or every or, or whatever every two-month thing if every they're months, like yeah. yeah that's what they're actually into but we yeah. shall see you next week we'll be live reacting here on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games going up later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games uh number three for you the witcher 3 wild hunt is coming to next gen blessing this is a cd project red post over there on their website we're working on the next generation edition of the witcher 3 wild hunt Developed to take advantage of the most powerful gaming hardware, the next-gen edition of the game will feature a range of visual and technical improvements, including ray tracing and faster loading times across the base game, both expansions, and all extra content. The next-generation edition of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt will release as a standalone purchase for PC, Xbox Series X, and PlayStation 5, as well as a free update for everyone who already owns the game on PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. That last part is shocking. Come that is the fuck blowing. on. You know what I mean? Like, God damn, CD Projekt Red. Everybody out here trying to nickel and dime for all these different things. And they're just like, here's this game with hundreds of hours of content that you already own and maybe didn't do anything with. And we'll just give you the updated, super fresh, next-gen version for free. Yeah. And, like, this is cool because it's not even an expected thing. Like we, uh, if they, no, if they, yeah. if if they didn't come out with this, right? I don't think anybody would blink an eye. And if they, if they charged for it, I don't think people would have an issue with it, right? Because this is a game that came out originally in twenty fifteen. Fifteen, yeah. This yeah, is, 20... I remember this was the first big, big game I feel that we were covering for kind of funny, where I took my PlayStation Four to MomoCon so I could keep playing it. Yeah, and like if they, if they, if they came out five years later, six years later, whenever this thing finally comes out, and they're like, hey, yeah, we're putting we're putting out a new and improved version of The Witcher 3, has ray tracing, has improvements, has all this stuff, uh, and if, if they charged for it, I'd be like, cool, get your money, because, yeah, like, putting out games takes work, right? That is development time. That is actual work you're putting into this thing. Like, you should get paid for that. The fact that they're including it as a free upgrade for people who already own it, that's yeah. wild. Like, that's really impressive. Yeah, I mean, again, like, I think... I, we I've talked about it a lot, obviously, over the years, but not recently, I guess. But like Witcher Three was such a coming out party for CD Projekt Red. Uh, granted, that's the third Witcher game from them, but it was the one that I think got on consoles and you know uh, made inroads in such a different way and won the game of the years and got them in this thing and you know really built them into like people understood what that brand is. They understand what that publisher slash developer is, and so. I remember the narrative being, though, at the time, right, that when you opened the, your game case and there was the note in there that was a thank you note from CD Projekt Red to you and saying how, you know, the cosmetic DLC and all that stuff would be free. Like, they would never charge for that. It was going to be, like, you know, the big expansions and the season pass there. And I remember yeah. them getting so many accolades for that in a time where it was people seeming to try to figure out the latest way to nickel and dime a player that they were able to go and do that for players and right there and then continue on that way. And then here years later, right? When you you talk about it, yeah, nobody expected this. Of course not, because we're all talking about what's going on with cyberpunk. Like cyberpunk is the big one. Cyberpunk's their, you know, their next big project, their next big game. It's basically a launch game for next gen, even though next gen versions aren't ready at launch, you know, backwards compatibility is going to be right there. It's going to be the thing everybody's going to be playing at that time. 
the fact that yeah they've been quietly or, or and there's no release date on this working on this and that they're gonna you know put it out here uh just brilliant really good for them really good yeah. for them and honestly, like this is making me look at the control situation like a tiny bit differently because I'm I'm I I very much came to the defense of uh, Remedy and Five Hundred Five with their treatment of control. And I'm still I'm still there as far as you know if you're putting out a complete version of your game on next gen to take advantage of that stuff and you don't necessarily like if you're not able to upgrade people who have just the base game and not the DLC, then like I'm fine with that like whatever. But the fact that CD Projekt Red is able to do this with The Witcher 3 and have it be so that, you know, no matter what version of the game, seemingly no matter what version of the game The Witcher 3 you have, you're able to upgrade and, and do that seamlessly. Like, if they can that, do that with a game that came out five years ago, then, what, like, what are you doing? That's been confirmed, by the way, that, yeah, it's, it's if you have Game of the Year, if you have the regular edition, you okay. get the upgrade. It's not... Yeah, that's not huge. Limiting it in any way. Yeah, of course. Well, there, it, it and it like is that, it is that, the... it is that dunk on 505. Yeah. <laughs> and then like, yeah, fuck you guys. You can't... You don't want to do this for some reason. We will. It, well, yeah. uh, so, <clears throat> I saw people posting about this. <laughs> and, uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> no, I know what it's like to come out of the block. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, uh, 505 is a sm- much smaller developer, right? And, like... Uh, Oh yeah, they have had yeah, nearly yeah. the success and that like, Witcher 3 and yeah, the Witcher like, series is given to CD Projekt Red. Exactly, yeah, and like sure. CD Projekt Red is also like, aren't they funded by their government and stuff like that? Um, yeah, Pol- the uh, Poland gives them some uh, tax break kickbacks kind of thing. Yeah, yeah so like uh, that's 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 the dirty word for it. Yeah. No, there are there's some there's the relationship there with the country. Um, so they probably definitely have like a little more leeway of they like, have more to work. Oh with. sure, yeah, yeah no, exactly. totally, totally, totally. Yeah, so I don't it's know just, if it's a fair it's comparison. I'm just saying. Okay. Oh, or sure. what about the comparison I, for NBA 2K then? Do you want to come out of the blocks and uh, you know 2K? They're just a struggling little public. I'm sorry, Greg. Did I did I say anything about NBA 2K? Uh, I think I, I only brought what up you said because you came out with this smokers cup. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate you. Uh, but I I I think for me it more, it more so comes down to what what is the standard going to be. And yeah. like it's interesting seeing how these different publishers and different companies are starting to set the standard for all right, what does the next gen upgrade look like? What does the for all intents and purposes, the next gen version of the remaster look like? And how are we treating that? Because toward the beginning of this gen, we all bought a bunch of different remasters for games because that was that's what that's what we knew. And like that that was completely acceptable. And going into this next gen with smart delivery being a thing, with uh uh you know, the way we've seen various publishers handle this. I feel like the 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 goalpost is being moved forward in a way that is going to be better for consumers if we get more and more situations like this Witcher Three thing as opposed to things like the NBA two NBA two K thing or even like the the um, control remedy thing. Uh, it's all it, it's all it's all going to be in comparison to one another. Uh, yeah, and of course. Of it's course, all this one is giant ball of wax. Exactly, and this isn't going to be a, a forever conversation because at a certain no. point, like we're going to leave all leave this all behind. But, Six months and it'll be over. We won't care. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I have uh, two. Well, first off, so the two things can, pertaining to this from the nanobiologist who gives you a deal of the day in the middle of this reminder, if you have Game Pass, you have the Witcher 3. You can buy the Witcher 3 for a discount via Game Pass or get the free upgrade via X, a Game Pass for the Series X. And then wait. Uh, so, hmm. so wait, is, is he saying that the Xbox Series X version of the Witcher 3 will be in Game Pass? Is that what he's implying? No, what he's saying is, so right now we're saying that if you ha- own Witcher 3, you can upgrade to the next gen version yes. for free, right? So he's saying if you were to go on Game Pass and buy Witcher 3 at the discount, then you would yeah. have Witcher 3 and then you could do this. Okay. Whole. I thought he also said that if you have Witcher 3 with Xbox Game Pass, then you can also get it on Xbox Series X, which I don't know how correct that is. Or maybe I just like... If you have... Like, Game Pass. You have Witcher 3. You can buy Witcher 3 for a discount via Game Pass or get the free upgrade via Game Pass on the Series X. Okay. I, I think, think I at that, that point, he's talking about uh, smart delivery, right? I'm going to see if, 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 if it was still on Game Pass when all this shit's going on, then that would happen that way. Yeah. And then the other part was uh, now I'll just had regarding CDPR and the Polish government quote CD project red gets $7 million from Polish government to research seamless multiplayer city creation end quote. That's all I could find regarding their ties. Moving on. then. Number four, while we're across the pond over there, let's talk about uh, an English studio. Uh, 
a big wig over at Media Molecule is stepping down. This is Marie DeLassandria uh, over at GamesIndustry.biz. Media Molecule co-founder Alex Evans has announced his departure from the Sony studio. After 13 years at the Little Big Planet and Dreams Developer, the technical director said on Twitter that he wanted to take a break from the game development or from game development and explore other opportunities. Quote, a few months ago, I did a bit of lockdown inspired soul searching and decided to step down from Dreams Dev to Dreams Fan. Take a break from game dev, a career I've been lucky enough to enjoy since I was a spotty 15 year old. He tw his tweets read Media Molecule is a wonderful place. I can't imagine making games anywhere else. But I wondered what else an old fart like me could do in this world. I've been in the game dev bubble so long, I'm not yet sure what's, ne what's next or even out there for someone like me. He also reassured Dreams fans about the title, uh, with his departure seemingly having no impact on the current developments of the project. For anyone worrying about Dreams, don't. Uh, what Media Molecule are doing in Dreams at the moment is going to blow your minds, and though I'll miss them all, I'll be cheering from the sidelines. Thanks to them for the, for the thanks to them for the first thirteen wonderful years, and here's to Media Molecule's next thirteen. The studio responded on Twitter, uh, thanking Evans for his leadership, friendship, and everything he's given to Media Molecule. The team added, "We'll continue to be weird and wonderful as you've always wanted, and there's forever space for you on our stream sofa." I actually inverted that, but it's fine. It's the same thing. Uh, Evans started his career in the industry at Bullfrog before working at Lionhead for six years on uh, six years as head of R and D. He co-founded Media Molecule with art director uh, Kareem Atuni, uh, creative director Mark Healy, and technical director David Smith in 2006. Sony acquired the studio in 2010. The developer's latest project, Dreams, launched in early access in early 2019 with ambitions of turning everyone into a game creator and giving users full commercial ownership of their creation. Uh, the studio's incredible achievement with Dreams got them, uh, got them a place in our People of the Year 2019 list. Of course, this game's industry up is. Uh, Dreams fully launched in February this year to critical acclaim, and the studio is now evaluating how it might allow players to use their in-game creations in commercial projects. Um, this is a nerdy one for me. Obviously, Alex has been around for so long. I mean, he used to give me little Big Planet demos uh, back when that game was launching, uh, and I was just starting my career. So it's crazy to think of somebody I think of as so synonymous with Media Molecule uh, leaving after 13 years. But of course, we wish him well. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's that's cool. Where are you where are you at with Dreams nowadays? You know. It's that it's that thing. I still have it on the PlayStation Four, and I look at it all the time. Of like, or I did before we were obsessed with stuff we're doing for reviews right now. But uh, I'd like to get back to it at some point. I just have no concrete plan to do so. You know what I mean? Like I had that idea I wanted to make for my level. I had assets come in from people I wanted to work with, and then pandemic hit, and then games started happening, and then I just got so far removed from it that I just have not doubled back to do anything with it. What about you? I'm pretty much in the same place. I keep wanting to boot it back up just to see what's going on and just to to. Uh, fuck around with different creations because when when dreams first came out that was the thing i enjoyed doing the most like jumping jumping in and playing all these different creations that were 30 minutes to an hour to two hours yeah. long and that felt like such a a cool thing and we've, we've gotten to a point of the year i think it was I, honestly the, the, this point of the year started in march where we got we got um uh doom eternal and then that then led into yeah. Uh, um, like Ori, I think, and that led into the Last of Us, which led into Ghost of Tsushima. Which now we're 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 in the place where we're playing a bunch of different games because it's, it's August and we're going to fall, right? And so now I'm playing Marvel's Avengers and Tony Hawk yeah. Pro Skater, and then a bunch of different indie games. Like the rush is upon us. The the, the, the normal Christmas season yeah. holiday rush is is upon us. All right, the rush is upon us. And I'm not I'm not had a minute to 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 check out Dreams the way I wanted to. This yeah. concerns me a little bit. Blessing, you're playing all these games. Where are you at with mm -hmm. Persona Five Royal? I'm play. in the new semester, yeah. and I, I, I love you, Barrett. Come on, stop, stop supporting yeah, the next cast. Gotta to watch the PS content. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm in, uh, I've been turned into an Xbot now. I'm like, if I listen to PS, I love you. I think I'll die. I think that's how well. That here, works. for the record, that the new episode works? of PS, I love you, where Blessing talks about Persona. I talk about Tell Me Why for like 15 minutes. So you're fine. <laughs> we got, we got it in there. We got you the shot. The table. I it up. Yeah. I was thinking about this this morning though that like with Persona Five, I'm I'm there now, right? Like I have You're probably in the what cool shit. You're in the cool new I'm, shit. I'm in the I'm in the cool new shit, and I am loving the cool new yeah. shit. And I probably have what maybe like thirty hours of this game left. I assume maybe more, maybe less. Uh, a little no less. Hours. A little less. A little less. Say. Okay, that's actually I'm actually very thankful about that because um, I like how far how far have you gotten into the new semester? I'm gonna fill my water and coffee. Okay, I'm. That's actually a good question. I, I forget without what trying to give any I'm spoilers. <laughs> yeah, and it's hard. I'm trying to describe where I'm at without giving spoilers. But basically, let's say I'm I'm like mid to late January. 
I want to say. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're. Yeah, I would say you have. Ooh, maybe twenty hours like, left. Because in in uh, that's great, but the thing is also, I was thinking about this this morning that like, I took I took that break from Persona Five mm-hmm. when Last of Us and Ghost of Tsushima came out because right. I was just like, all right, yeah, it's time. I need to put all my focus in, into into these other games. I'm at the point again now where I'm like, all right, Avengers is out and no, Tony Hawk and gotta stick a bunch with of it, games. Man. And what if I just took another Persona break and then came back to it? Lord knows when. God, to no, ble- it. Here, here's the thing. You keep that notebook. Start a notebook. That's what I did just the, for this occasion. The last 30 hours of that game is still my game of the year. I'm just saying. Mm. I'm just saying. It's very good. It is very good. I'll I'll see what I can do. I want to finish it. That's a no. That's, that's a no. The, <laughs> the other, the other I'm not is, playing it anytime I, soon. Like I'm 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 loving it, right? But I also just want to get it out the way. Persona is one of those games where I'm like, man. I want more and more and more of this, but at the same time, end already. Just end. Why am I 120 hours into this game? End. <laughs> like, it doesn't make sense how long stop. this game is. Please stop. <laughs> it's Which just so long. long. What do you say? Which, Which three is that long? long. Yeah. Uh, w, how long? Wait, how long does it take to just mainline Witcher 3? I don't know about mainline. I've no, never been putting at least 120 hours into that game. Witcher 3 was one of those ones, though, where, like, I don't. I think I started that game with no plans to finish it. Like I just yeah. got as far as I could, and I was like, "All right, cool, I'm done." And that was fine for me. Persona, I feel like I, I Persona have the need to finish it because it's, it's Persona. Number five on the Roper Report: Red Dead Online has shrunk lobbies. Apparently, this is Patricia Patricia Hernandez at Polygon. Normally, when you log into Rockstar's Wild West game, there should be around thirty or so Red Dead Online players roaming the world with you. It is, after all, a multiplayer game. But if you've booted it up recently, you might have entered a barren wasteland, at least when it comes to other actual humans. According to a handful of Red Dead Online players who spoke to Polygon over Discord, Red Dead Online lobbies have shrunk down considerably following the August 24th update that, in addition to adding new content, lists sustainability and security fixes. Rockstar did not respond for a request for comment, but similar reports have surfaced elsewhere. One player tells Polygon that they recently entered a game with only two people in it, which might sound bad, except the small player counts seem to be helping Red Dead Online. The MMO Lite has had a rough year, with issues so far ranging that at one point, it was nearly impossible to do anything in the game. The Western has also had trouble keeping itself populated with animals and NPCs, and every time Rockstar tries to fix it, something else breaks, seems to break. But right now, with tiny player lobbies, things actually seem to work, fans say. Quote, low player session has made it easier to get legendary animals, one fan told Polygon. If the session is crowded, people will fight to get legendary animals, which is not efficient. While Rockstar has not announced such a major change to the game, fans feel that it must be intentional. The update that caused this has been live for over a week now, and despite reports, nothing has changed. And for some, that's just as well. Prior to the update, one of the most requested features by the community were private lobbies, uh, to the degree that even some people figured out how to glitch them into existence. Quote, I've honestly hated Rockstar's decision uh, to force players into public libraries only in Red Dead Online. So I'm really happy that we currently have a low player count lobbies uh, that allow you to either do your own thing or play with a group of friends uninterrupted. A Red Dead Online Discord community leader tells Polygon. It's always Plus interesting one. to check back in with I was going to say, why Red didn't Dead you, Online. you love GTA Online. What, why didn't you get into the Red Dead Online? I mean, just because I didn't enjoy Red, Red Dead that much. Um, I man. did... I did think I could get into Red Dead Online uh, despite that. And I played a little bit of it and I was just like, why am I playing this when I could just be playing GTA Online? Like, like honestly, that's kind of where I came down on because for sure. me, the appeal of GTA Online is how ridiculous it is. And it is how, like, you are living that that crime fantasy. Like, you are stealing cars and you are upgrading cars and upgrading your apartment and, like, gathering money and, do, like, doing all the stuff that allows you to feel like this cool crime committing badass I'm a crime uh, committing badass, <laughs> I'm a crime committing badass. Uh, but yeah Red Dead Red Dead is all about the cowboy fantasy which just has never been a thing that I've had sure. the, the the fervor for uh, but yeah just to see to see Rockstar come out of GTA Online which is one of the most successful online experiences out there right as far as like the amount of players and numbers and sales and all that stuff to then look at Red Dead Online and, and to see the amount of struggle that it's had, despite the amount of I know fandom that is there for Red Dead Red Dead Redemption Two, like I know yeah. people absolutely adore that game, um, or at least like the people who adore it really adore it. 
the fact that they've just not been able to figure it out in a way that is anywhere near as comparable as GTA Online. Not necessarily surprising, but fascinating to follow to see like the shifts they're making in order in order to try and fix this thing, fix this thing and make it better. And at this point, I've kind of given up all hope that they're going to make it as good as something like GTA Online. Yeah. Um, who knows? Well, blessing. I'm excited to see what they make it into, but that's still so far away. I want you to tell me about a list where I could go to find more current things. But before you do that, I want to tell you about our sponsors. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, you can go to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames if you want to support the show and get it ad-free. And speaking of ads, let's talk about Brooklinen. Falls right around the corner, and what better time to refresh your space than a fresh new season. Uh, we're talking about all new super soft bedding, towels, and even loungewear. If you're going to sit back and admire your new digs, you might as well be insanely comfortable doing it. Home to the internet's favorite sheets, Brooklinen's got over 50,000 five-star reviews and counting. And because they love a deal almost as much as they love comfort, Brooklinen's Labor Day event is happening this weekend, featuring everything you need to outfit your home this season at a fraction of the price. Uh, you've heard a lot about it because I use Brooklinen exclusively as my bed sheets. Uh, I also use them exclusively now as my bed or towels, not bed towels. That doesn't make any sense. Towels. When I get out of the shower, I use that. When I go to bed, sleeping in Brooklyn. Why? Uh, comfortable, soft, affordable, and it was easy to do online for the bedding where I was able to match it to everything I wanted it to. Uh, we're all spending so much time at home nowadays. Why not upgrade your homes with Brooklinen? Their Labor Day event is coming up this weekend, and it's a big one. Don't miss out on big savings on all things sheets, towels, loungewear, and so much more. But if you can't wait, you can get 10% off your first order and free shipping right now if you use the promo code GAMES at brooklinen.com. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Brooklinen, everything you need to live your most comfortable life. Up next is Logitech. Uh, if you've heard me talk about this ad this week, you know that over at the studio, I use the Logitech Pro Gaming headset with the blue mic when I'm playing on my PlayStation 4 over there. Uh, they have a new version out, though. And so it's called the Pro X Wireless Lightspeed Gaming Headset, and it's a game changer. Based on the award-winning Pro Gaming Headset design, Pro X uh, Wireless Headset features high-quality materials, advanced communications, precision audio, and total wireless freedom. Uh, it's a high performance Pro X gaming headset with light speed, wireless technology, and up to 20 hours of battery life. Uh, it also features a detachable pro grade microphone featuring real time blue voice technology, including passive noise isolation, compressor limiter, and more for clean professional voice comps. Uh, it doesn't stop there as it's also the advanced Pro G 50 millimeter drivers, which deliver clear and precise sound imaging with improved bass response. Hear footsteps and environmental cues uh, with clarity uh, to give you a competitive advantage. You can also experience this headset's supreme comfort and durability. For a limited time, Logitech G is offering our listeners 10% off select products at logitechg.com. Use the promo code KF Games for 10% off today. That's 10% off select Logitech G products with the promo code KF Games at logitechg.com. And final sponsor is Hims. For Hims.com is all about men's wellness. If you need help with hair loss, ED, or have a cold, interested in mental health or COVID-19 home tests, Hims is here for you. We all know the story. Andy and Nick wanted to maintain their own wellness, so they looked to Hims to keep their hair healthy and full. And we can confirm it's healthy and full. 66% uh, of men start to lose their hair by the age 35 and thanks to science baldness can be optional Hims connects you with FDA approved products to treat hair loss and have thousands of happy customers loving their results if approved products will be shipped to your door in discreet packaging today Hims is giving you their best offer yet if you're not happy with your results after 90 days Hims will give you a full refund and right now our listeners can get their first visit absolutely free go to 4 slash games daily that's 4 slash games daily uh, full refund of price paid available for the first 90s day supply uh, refund requests must be made between 90 and 180 days after the product shipment is delivered prescription products require an online consultation with a medical professional who will determine if a prescription is appropriate restrictions apply see the website for full details and safety information at forhams.com slash games daily blessing i don't know right. if they'll, i don't know if they'll ever fix that they're red dead online but i know that other games are coming out right now and i want to know where i'd go to get them listed you would go to the official list of opening software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. I wouldn't betray you, Greg. I wouldn't play the jazzy thing like Kevin did yesterday. I could, wouldn't. Could you, even, if, even if you wanted to. A violation to, of trust. What? You ain't got that MP3. I don't, but I wouldn't do it. I exactly. Wouldn't do, I wouldn't do that to Greg, okay? I love him too much. Thank Unlike you. I Kevin. love you too, Bear. 
I, he hates me and I hate him. <laughs> uh, out today, ladies and gentlemen, Marvel's Avengers on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, Stadia. Uh, Demu Reborn on PC. NBA 2K21 on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. Uh, Liar of the Clockwork God. Oh, no, Lair of the Clockwork Lair. God. My apologies on that one. Uh, Xbox One, Switch. Uh, the Coma 2, Vicious Sisters, Xbox One. Uh, oh, the Story of Seasons on PS4. You were excited about that or you were just telling me about it? Bless I was you just, just read uh, about it. Yeah, it was just one of the PlayStation picks on PS Louis this week. Uh, Paradise like Story of Seasons. And it kind of looks like Animal Crossing. Wasn't that the thing, too? Yeah, it's like comparable Harvest to Animal Moon. Crossing if you're like looking for that kind of thing. It, the Story of Seasons in general is like a, is a Harvest Moon-like game. And this is Dorymon's Story of Seasons, which I don't know anything about Dorymon. Sounds like yeah. a Digimon. It sounds like a Digimon. And so if you want to play Digimon Story of Seasons, boom, there you go. Dorymon Digivolve to Blessingmon. I don't know. That's all I got. I don't. I don't watch enough. <laughs> I didn't watch enough Digimon to like have a like a reaction to that. I, I couldn't reference it. All yeah. I know is that they have like the main wrong, wrong Digimon. <laughs> they have the main Digimon that looks kind of like Charmeleon, and I really like Charmeleon. And so, like, mm. I kind of always wanted to watch Digimon, but I just didn't. Digimon. I didn't have the time. I'm gonna say this. I was watching Digimon seasons one and two recently on Hulu, and I will say this. I think that anime holds up better than the Pokemon anime. Oh, how dare you! Blessing. How the Pokemon Blessing. anime is great. Blessing. I'm just gonna say it. I just gotta yeah. say it. I think there's the, the, the anime is better. Paradise Killer the on Switch and PC. Lose Revenge on Xbox One. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater One Plus Two on PlayStation Four, yeah. Xbox One, and PC. Room, uh, you can get the review yesterday on Kind of Funny Games Daily from Tim Geddes. Uh, roommates on Switch. Dirt Tracking Two on Switch. Solitaire Spider Minimal on Switch. Uh, Fantasy Tower Defense on Switch. Uh, Mimi Cry on PC and Mac. Meanwhile on PC. Dreamcatcher on PC and Mac. Astro Vidi on PC. Uh, Do It With Hay on PC. Louie on PC and Mac. Worlds and Club on Apple Arcade. Deals of the day for you. This is this is a legit like, hey, you could this is a funny. I'll read it and I just I just love the fact that Marvel's Avengers, you know, they did the gum thing, they did the Verizon thing. And don't get me wrong, get fucking paid, everybody, and then pay it forward because this is a contest or whatever. But deals of the day, all right. Celebrating its partnership with Square Enix and Crystal Dynamics for the Marvel's Avengers video game, every week Vizio fans will have a chance to win a TV, soundbar, and a digital copy of the game uh, to up their gaming experience. More details uh, are below for the sweepstakes. Uh, you can get the info, though, at vizio.com slash playavengers. You can go. They're giving away like an 85-inch TV. They're doing all this stuff. It goes through December. They're doing a whole bunch of different give- giveaways. So you can win the game. You can win, win a TV, win a soundbar. But this is the one that cracked me up. This is the quote that came with it. We want Marvel's Avengers to be completely immersive, be a completely immersive gaming experience. And Vizio's high performance takes everything to an entirely different level. The all new Vizio Pro Gaming Engine in their TVs will make you feel like you're a superhero. End quote. Crystal Dynamics creative director, Sean S. Guy. <laughs> It's uh, the entire Avengers I hate like, partnering thing is so 2005, 2007. And I fucking, you ha- I haven't seen the light of this so much. much. Get like, fucking I've- paid, get fucking paid, put out your cosmetics DLC, give away TVs, like give away TV and sound bars. That's sure. Cool. Do it. I'm surprised they didn't make like an Iron Man reference. It's like, oh, this is a TV that Tony, that Tony Stark would use in his mansion. Like, Why? like <laughs> I, I hate mean, it. <laughs> I wish there was a thing of it was like you, you register to get entered into it, right? And then you get a code to redeem it for like an iron a Vizio Iron Man skin. And it like I, I don't know, I it looks like it's, it looks it's just branded Vizio or something. Like fucking get it. Go ahead. I remember the Mountain Dew and Doritos in Peace Walker. Get fucking paid. Have some fun. What yeah. year is it? Why is I guess happening? like I am a big I am like a huge Metal Gear Solid fan. I guess I I let Kojima slide on so many things when it comes to Monster Energy drinks being in his game. It's just that th- yeah, it's that thing of like I just don't think we see it. As I often. haven't seen it. You look like okay. Halo's got double XP and all that shit, and like in the in the, in the drinks and stuff. Like, I mean, Call of Duty's never stopped. Like exactly. Call of Duty had the Dorito, but it's thing. like it's that thing where you have those brands where you're just like, oh, that's what it is. That you know, what I mean, like we're so used to it to see mm. Avengers, this new property drop, and also be Avengers, but also be on gum packets and this, that, and the other. And like, don't get me wrong, I bought all the fucking gum. I wanted all the goddamn nameplates and the emote and all that shit. And it's like, whatever, this was fun. And it, it reminds me of this stupid thing. It's like, I, I just want to like, win. So it's like, whatever. I want to see, see this with like the game we'd expect it for the least. Like, I want to see The Last of Us Part 3 have some sort of like Vizio sponsorship slash 
partnership to where you're just finding Vizio TVs in the game left and right. Listen, you're going to be so leveled emotionally by Tell Me Why, episode three. We've partnered with Postmates. <laughs> so you can get 10% <laughs> off your first delivery of food because you'll be crying too hard to leave the house. Honestly, I love both those things. And so like if, they, if they Fair. partnered, I'd be all about that. That'd be a partnership I'd be in for. I'm sure you would be. I mean, and that's the thing. It's whatever. It's goofy and weird and it's not affecting anything, but it's like, Go win a TV. Go win a TV, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Spe- speaking of TV, uh, Greg, you cut me off as I was telling Barrett this. Oh my apologies. The Pokemon, the Pokemon. Oh my TV fucking series. god! It's you time to squat up. Where they it's went time to, to squat where, up. It's time to squat up. This is where one of you writes into Patreon.com/slash Kind of Funny Games, giving me your name, username, platform of choice, and why you need help in a video game. I read it here. The best friends come and find you. Today, I'm bringing a very special one from Jordan Deeb. Platforms Jordan needs help on is all. Best friends assemble. Today is finally the day. Marvel's Avengers is out, and I'm sure many of us kind of funny best friends need people to play with. I, and other kind of funny best friends, have made a Discord for any KFBFs who want to play Marvel's Avengers. The chat is for all platforms, so no matter where you play, come and find people to squad up with. The link to the Discord will be posted on my Twitter, at Jordan underscore Deeb, D-E-B, on the kind of funny community Facebook group, and I'll include it in this squad up, which is invite.gg slash Avengers. Uh, I thought that was a really cool thing. I went and joined it today. You know, I've been talking to Avengers in there and hanging out. And it's a great idea. Of course, I, I think there's been so many people like, oh, man, I don't have friends that will play this game with me. Obviously, we always talk about kind of funny best friends play and squad up can only get to so many people. Whereas if they make their own discord just for a game, why not? Good idea, everybody. Thank you, Jordan, for doing that with your friends. Invite.gg slash KF Avengers. Jordan signs off. I look forward to seeing you guys uh, join this group and hopefully find a new team to play with. Uh, we ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games to go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up. This is an interesting one. Of course, maybe it's, it's just somebody using a name, but I, I believe it. I think Radic from CD Projekt Red was watching live and popped in to clarify things <laughs> for about the Witcher 3 next gen update. Uh, CD Projekt Red writes again, probably on the Witcher 3 next gen and subscription service copy like Xbox Game Pass. The next generation edition of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt will be available both as a purchase, PC, Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5, and a free upgrade for everyone who purchased the game in physical or digital format on PC, Xbox One, or PlayStation 4, period. The upgrade won't work for the game obtained via a subscription service. So that actually leads me to the question then of what Nano was talking about. Of mm-hmm. So if I you're saying if it's already on Game Pass... When if it's still on Game Pass, when this goes live, which he also says The Witcher 3 next gen is coming in 2021. If it's live on Game Pass in 2021, that wouldn't get me the next gen version. But if I bought it through Game Pass, are you saying that wouldn't get it? The upgrade won't work for the game obtained via a subscription service. So if you bought it as a discount through Game Pass, you wouldn't be eligible for that. See, this brings me back to the confusion I had earlier in the episode. Because that's that's like that's the exact thing that's kind of breaking my brain brain a little bit. Because like, is it a thing? Because if it's on if it's on Xbox Game Pass by then, it'd be on both. It, Xbox Series X Game Pass isn't different from Xbox One Game Pass, right? No, but it's... You, so are we then working with different SKUs between the next-gen version and the current-gen version? And is that like... I think it's just the difference of you'd get Witcher 3 Smart Delivery, whatever they're doing that for the Game Pass version, but it wouldn't like you turn on... game. I don't think that Witcher 3... Xbox Series X version, next gen, Witcher 3 next gen isn't going to be on Xbox Game Pass, if that makes sense. Okay. Does that make sense? Because I like, think it, that, that, that is different skews, I think is what they're saying. But there are, is the expectation that Witcher 3 is going to be, because like games come and go from Game Pass, right? And so who knows where we're going to be in 2021 20, with the Witcher 3 on Game Pass. Yeah. First, actually, my first question is, is Witcher 3 on Game Pass right now? Because that actually is very important. Is, yeah, yeah. Okay. So if it's on Game Pass by the time this is coming out, the, the idea of it is, oh, it's a next-gen SKU, like, both versions isn't on Game Pass. And that also opens up a bigger question of, what does that mean for the wider world of next-gen upgrades for Xbox Series X? Uh, the Game other Pass. thing we have here was nothing. No, I, We've I, not I, talked about this. No, we're not doing this again. We're not doing this again. We're not doing it again, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, but bless uh, this episode of Digimon really quick. <laughs> my brain is breaking ladies and gentlemen that's your final uh, kind of funny games daily for this week but we will be back next week remember of course it's a funky kong week um next week is monday we have off because of labor day 
So then let's run through the host for next week, which I didn't update. Blessing, you can't do Tuesday because you're uh, you're I'm off. you're off. So I'm it'll probably be me and be me and Imran. I have a doctor's appointment at nine thirty, but it's one of those call it in these things. So I assume that'll be fine. I'll put show. myself on there. If not, if Games Daily starts late, I'm at the cancer doctor for a checkup. Not 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 sick. Um. Then what? So that would be that. Then Wednesday would be me and Gary Witta. Then Thursday would be me and Tim. And then Friday would be me and Blessing. You know what? I'm going to give you... You get to host that one. I'm going to put you at the front of that one. All right? Okay. Because I want you to get some work out of here. You're just, you're just over here languishing. You'll be, you'll be recovered from moving by then. We'll get to see your new house, your new setup. Yeah, man. Are you confident in the internet? Room. Are you excited? Smaller room? Yeah. No, I, the, the, the internet at my new place should be better than the internet at my current place. Okay. okay. Yeah. Because okay. I got... My, Michael, my, Michael took care of it. My yeah, roommate, I'm, Michael. I'm glad somebody's there taking care of you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kevin's sister won't be able to look out for you forever. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's Kind of Funny Games Daily. Remember, each and every weekday, uh, 10 a.m., youtube.com slash kind of funny game or twitch.tv slash kind of funny games live, youtube.com slash kind of funny games later, podcast services later. Remember, the best place to get it, just like the Xbox Series X, of course, is patreon.com slash kind of funny games, where you can get it ad free. You can submit to be on the show and you can get the post show we're about to record. But for everybody who has no box tossed our way, it's no big deal. Until next time. It's been our pleasure to serve you.